this version of Winemaker Minute is actually going to be a, a very exciting one because I actually love talking about uh, barrels or vessels that actually we, uh, we age uh, wines in, whether it's white wine or red wine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get started right away and um, kind of talk about vessels that are used in white wine production. And uh, with the wines that we produce here at Crush Pad, whether it's a Sauvignon Blanc or a Viognier or a Chardonnay, really the, the discussion that we have with the client in kind of finalizing a, a, a wine style will dictate, in turn, the vessel that we're going to be aging the wine in. Now, in talking about white wines and the kind of vessel to, to use, let's say you want to make a very crisp, vibrant Chardonnay, kind of like a Chablis style, a wine that doesn't have a lot of malolactic activity to it and is very crisp and is very refreshing. That's where stainless steel fermentation comes into play. There's no need for oak. There's no need for any of that secondary aromatic and flavor profile from the wood that you get during fermentation and aging to um, muddle up that bright fruit character that you're looking for for that Chablis style Chardonnay. Same holds true with the Sauvignon Blanc. You want to make a very crisp Sancerre style SP, you don't really need to uh, do any kind of a barrel fermentation so you can stick to the stainless uh, drum or stainless tank for your uh, vessel. If you're making a very oily, creamy Chardonnay or Viognier, I think that's where barrel fermentation and barrel aging comes into play. So as far as what barrel maker to use for Chardonnay winemaking, a couple of really popular ones that we like to use here at Crush Pad are François Frère and Radu. And uh, with each of those coopers, they do have forest selections. The most popular one for Chardonnay is Allier. And Allier is a forest that's actually just in the, in the center part of France. There's, there's actually a whole cluster of different forests that are in the center of France that a lot of times a barrel maker will categorize as center of France. But which, within that, there is um, smaller parcels of, uh, of uh, forests, one being Allier. And another really popular one, particularly in Pinot, is Troncé. And now in transitioning from whites to reds, I suggest that uh, you all uh, grab a glass of wine or maybe even a bottle, sit down, because we're going to actually uh, go through quite a bit of material in talking about uh, vessels that are used in red winemaking, which for the most part really is wood barrels. And uh, we have a lot of different varieties that we actually use here at Crush Bad to make wine with, whether it's Pinot or Zinfandel or Syrah. Cabernet, even some Merlot. We played around with some Sangiovese last year. Really, those all dictate really the kind of vessel you're going to go into. Now, in looking at the wine plant, there are a few different choices. There is New Barrel. There is 33% Zebra, 50% Zebra. I'll talk about the Zebras uh, in a minute. We also have Neutral Barrels. And what Neutral Barrels mean is barrels that have had wine in them at least three different vintages, where there is no chance of any oak influence affecting the wine and it's strictly pretty much used as an aging vessel. So the zebra barrels are our one barrel equivalent of a certain percentage of new oak that you want in your wine. And I think that they work better with certain wines than with others, namely Pinots and Syrahs. Those are wines that don't age as long in oak as Cabernets do. So you can actually really benefit from getting that certain percentage of new oak that you want in your wine by aging it in a either 33% zebra or a 50% zebra. So what they do is they take a brand new barrel and if they're making a 50% zebra, they will have one brand new and two neutrals. Break them apart and actually put them back together so that you have 50% new oak as well as 50% neutral oak in, the, in each of the barrels. As far as the 33% is concerned, it's one new to three neutral. Now, I just uh, finished talking about uh, the use of zebras in varieties like Pinot and Syrah. What do you do when you're making a Cab or a Bordeaux style of wine? Those are the wines that I strongly believe benefit from a uh, rotation program, where we actually have them in a brand new barrel to start with. And over the course of the 18 to 24 months that the wine is aging, we're constantly evaluating the wine. We're visiting it every quarter or so, tasting it making sure that the, the wine is evolving nicely, as well as keeping an eye on how the oak is integrating into the wine. Now, each individual client uh, comes and meets with me or one of our other winemakers, and we evaluate the wine, particularly 8 to 12 months after, uh, after the, the vintage date. And if you find that the oak has started to integrate nicely and has reached a saturation point, then we can actually move it into a once used or a neutral barrel where you don't get any more of the new oak influence coming into the wine, but you actually allow the new oak that you have already integrated into your wine to actually soften up and uh, 
evolve so that it becomes a more in tune with where you want uh, the oak component to be at bottling time. Now, the most popular form of oak is French, mainly because there is an, there's an elegance to it. There is actually a, a, a softness to the oak, which is not too overpowering, which is not too aggressive. And it really complements Pinot, really complements Cabernet, and for the most part, Syrah as well. American oak is more aggressive, is a little bit spicier, a lot of times tends to have a higher level of natural vanillin component to it that really, really complements a variety like Zinfandel. Zinfandel is actually a very spicy variety itself, and when mixed in with a uh, new American oak barrel, can really complement uh, the wine with that spicy, almost resinous component that uplifts the aromatic as well as the flavor profile. For Cabernet, there is a handful that I really like, as well as uh, some of our other winemakers. Terenceau, for one. Sylvain, another one. And uh, Alain Fouquet actually has a very, very nice uh, barrel that, that he makes that really complements those uh, real um, fruit-forward, opulent, really uh, kind of cultish type of Cabernets that you want to make, where you have a little bit of that hazelnut, uh, nutty component showing through in the uh, aftertaste of the wine. And talking about Pinot, the barrels that we really uh, recommend for clients to use are, again, François Frère, as well as Ramon. Ramon is a very popular choice. If you're looking at a Pinot that is a little bit more brooding, that is a little bit uh, denser, and you want to express the heavier oak, which Ramon can give you, but if the fruit can handle it, why not uh, age it in, in a barrel like Ramon, which can actually give you a little bit more of, a, of an uplift in, in oak uh, concentration. Now I will talk about toast level which is the, really the last part in, in the decision that's made in the barrel that, that you want to use. And there is a, a very nice list of, of toast levels, all the, from light toast to the very heavy toast with toasted heads. And there's a whole gamut of choices in between those two, from light toast to medium toast, to medium toast with toasted heads, etc., etc. And each of those different toast regimes actually incorporate a different flavor and aromatic profile to your wine. If you're looking at a wine that is very fruity and very soft, but you want some level of oak aging, then having a light to medium toast is the way to go so that you don't get any of the smoky components that can actually drown out the bright fruit component of your wine. So you really want to stay away from those heavier toasts if you want to make a wine that is very fruit driven. And that's irregardless of whether you're making a red wine or a white wine. The, the, the toast level, to some extent, really complements the, the ability for the fruit to shine and be the, uh, the, the front and center characteristic of your wine. So now, kind of in summary, we've, we've gone through a lot of material here during uh, this uh, Cooper or vessel type barrel uh, winemaker minute. And uh, at, at the core of this issue really is the uh, concept of style and what kind of wine a particular client wants to make. That really dictates whether they want to go with stainless steel versus barrel. And that, in, for the most part, is associated to a white wine. They're making a Pinot. Do they want to go with a new oak for a few months and then transfer to a neutral? Or do they want to stay with a zebra barrel all the way through its nine to ten month uh, barrel aging? They're making a cab rotation program going into that new oak barrel and then moving it into a, uh, into a neutral 12, 14 months down the road before they bottle the wine after 18 to 20 months of, of aging. After the vessel type, then there is the issue of do you want to use French oak or do you want to use American oak? Do you want to use Eastern European oak? All of those different types of oak impart a flavor and a taste characteristic that really then dictates the style of wine you want to make. And then the barrel maker. The experience that a lot of the crush pad winemakers have with all the different barrel makers is invaluable to the clients in gi giving them the suggestion of a particular barrel type or barrel maker that they want to use for their wine. So really, again, talk with your winemakers, figure out the style of wine you want to make, talk about some commercial examples that you really enjoy, that you think are excellent examples of the kind of wine you would want to make here at crush pad, and we will do our best to actually match you with the perfect barrel or vessel I should say.